Well, let's get to know another form of bone forming tumor, which is osteodosteoma. These are benign circumscribed lesions that may arise in the cortex of long bones or occasionally the cancellous bone of the spine. It affects young patients aged 10 to 35 and is three times commoner in males as compared to females. The pathology of the tumor, the characteristic feature is the formation of a small needles of osteoid tissue, usually less than 0.5 cm in diameter, surrounded by a reactive zone of dense sclerotic newborn formation. And this is as the morphology similar to the tumor, which is larger than 2 cm and are classified as osteoblastoma. So as we will be getting along, we'll find this another form of tumor known as the osteoblastoma. Otherwise, if the tumor is 0.5 centimeter with the same characteristic, it will remain being osteoid osteoma. Uh, to the clinical features, uh, they usually present with increasingly severe but well localized deep aching pain and sometimes local bone tenderness. So the deep aching pain is the what brings someone to the hospital, and especially this someone uh, is a male. The pain is worse at night and is eased by aspirin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is the diagnostic feature. So the tumor that arises in the periarticular site may elicit joint pain, swelling, effusion, and limited range of motion, which can be confused with inflammatory arthritis. So this tumor, it could be, uh, particularly it may present with these other forms of clinical features, and they are the same as those of inflammatory arthritis. Otherwise, unless it's confirmed either radiographically or with other findings, then to bring up with the conclusion that the tumor is actually osteoid osteoma. For the differential diagnosis, it could be either osteoblastoma or otherwise that uh, inflammatory arthritis are from only clinical uh, findings. So the radiographic features, which is a uh, very specific, osteoid osteoma is around and radiolucent with frequent central patchy mineralization and the lesion has well-defined margin and is often surrounded by a zone of sclerosis or reactive zone. And that may obscure the small central needles within the area of reaffection. As we'll be getting along, we'll, we'll be able to check the same. Then the needles is based in on a fine CT scan cut and also exhibits intense uptake of an isotope bone scan. So the main characteristic about radiographic feature is that radiolucent uh, with central patchy mineralization and the lesion has a well-defined margin and this is often surrounded by a zone of sclerosis or the zone which is much reactive. So let's check about the radiographic features of uh, osteodosteoma. So this is an uh, anterolateral radiograph which is the A, then we have uh, B, which is axial computed tomo uh, tomography of osteodosteoma rising beneath the periosteum of the femur, and the tumor is small, radiolucent, and surrounded by a prominent rim of reactive woven, woven bone. Sorry. So let's get to know about this. Uh, this is the uh, osteoid tissue. Then we have a uh, surrounding of dense sclerotic bone, which is uh, right here. So this is the epiradiograph of a femur and this is the most distal aspect the supra uh, condyla have that kind of uh, need as tissue we as well have the stuff here then we have surrounded by dense sclerotic bone and the need is right there the central uh, this is a gross image of osteodosteoma as I said we have that stuff which is the need then it's surrounded uh, around it surrounding half that bone which is uh, a sclerotic and it's much uh, reactive so prognosis and treatment osteodosteoma has limited growth potential in younger patients some osteomas may resolve spontaneously after several months but most require surgical treatment the removal of central needles results in resolution of the reactive bone formation and dramatic relief 
of symptoms. This can be achieved by open surgical excision or curettage, but increasingly less invasive methods are used where the necessary equipment is available. A city-guided needle can be inserted into the needles and the lesion oblated with a radiofrequency coagulation. So that's how this osteoid osteoma is treated. It may either resolve spontaneously or otherwise it may require surgical treatment. And the process of surgical treatment or excision is by open surgical excision or curettage, then uh, by a city-guided needle can also as well be incited into the needles and the lesion be oblated with a high radio frequency coagulation. So that's all about osteoid osteoma. So this is just but the fact sheet about the definition. It's a bone or bone forming tumor characterized by a central needle surrounded by a sclerotic bone. The needle is smaller than two centimeters of which is 0 0.5 uh, centimeters in diameter incident and location accounts for approximately 11% of benign bone tumors. A deficit of long bones, especially the femur, but can affect any bone. Morbidity and mortality. Osteoid osteoma is benign but painful, which we have been able to identify. It's relieved by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Then sex, race, and age distribution. More common in male individuals at a ratio of three, ratio of one, then children and young adults are most commonly affected. Clinical features, we, we did find out that a local pain or tenderness, which is a deep aching pain and can be relieved by non -steroidal. And this pain is most severe at night. Then the lesion close to the joint can cause symptoms mimicking arthritis. The lesion involving vertebrae can cause painful scoli scoliosis that are curvature of the spine. Then radiographic finding, we have been able to identify the well demarcated radiolucency with central mineralization surrounded by dense uh, sclerosis uh, region. Then prognosis and treatment, uh, that's the first choice is aspirin, then related analgesic surgical resection or percutaneous oblation with high radio frequency coagulation. Then finally, local recurrence uh, rate around 5%.